Iyaka na'bud was the purpose in life. The second part is what is going to help you achieve na'bud. And that is wa iyaka nasta'een. Wa iyaka nasta'een. And you alone, we seek help. Through you alone, we're going to seek help. This is what nasta'een means. Nasta'een comes from the word awn. And awn means help. And the scene nasta'een means we seek your help. And the noon at the beginning makes it a present tense. In other words, we continuously are going to seek your help on this matter. So in other words, once you say iyaka na'bud, you acknowledged your goal and purpose in life. And that is to enslave yourself to Allah Azza wa Jal. You acknowledge that it's going to be a difficult matter and it's not going to be something that will come easy. It will require a lot of struggle, sacrifice and a lot of effort from your behalf. So then as a result, Allah gives you the solution that you on your own would fail. If nasta'een is not a part of your life, you will fail. Nasta'een meaning to seek Allah's help. If you do not seek Allah's help in your worship, you're going to fail. For that means do not rely on your power. Do not rely on your alarm. Do not rely on anything that is worldly. Because that has nothing to do with your worship. I prove it to you. You have a nine year old and you have a 20 year old. Nine year old, mashallah, he's up in the late night, late hours of the night praying. He comes to Salat al Fajr. He's fasting that day, perhaps. He's on his Adhkar al Sabah al Masa. His Sunnah before and after the prayers are there. The 20 year old, he's still asleep. Can't fast the day, it's too difficult. Yeah, if he, if he bear, that's if he prays an obligation, let alone a sunnah before and after. What happened? Which one had body strength more than the other? And a definite, the 20 year old would have had body strength more than the nine year old. So how come the nine year old was worshipping like a machine and the 20 year old wasn't able to do anything? To understand that worship had nothing to do with body strength and had nothing to do with age. You get two, year, two 20 year olds. One is worshipping, one is not. What's the difference? And the worship is tied to the heart. It's a matter of strength of the heart, strength of the mind, strength of the intellect and strength of the soul. And all of these are spiritual matters in the hand of Allah. And no one can inject them with power other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, إِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ when you're seeking Allah's help, you're seeking Allah's spiritual help. Then the physical being of yourself doesn't really affect worship. The physical, there's a lot of ahkam that deal with that. You can't stand praying, doesn't matter, sit down. You can't, doesn't matter, brother, lie down and pray. You can't fast, doesn't matter, Allah has given you the reward if you had intended that and you did that when you are young and healthy. You travel, doesn't matter, shorten the prayer. All these ahkam doesn't matter, they just come to our convenience. But the idea is, from the very beginning, how is your heart going to find ease with these worships and these legislations of Allah Azza wa Jal? If you do not seek Allah's help consistently, that's all gone. This is why the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he gave advice to Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu. And he said to him, Ya Mu'adh, Inni uhibbuka fi Allah. I love you for the sake of Allah. Yani Nabi Sallallahu wants to teach him something important. For he said to him, do not leave after every salat that you say, Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. He said to him, make sure, watch out. After every salat, don't forget to say, Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrik. Oh Allah, aid me, help me. Establish your dhikr, your remembrance. Wa shukrik. And oh Allah, give me aid and help and support that I establish your shukr, that I'm always grateful and show gratitude to you. Wa husni ibadatik. And oh Allah, give me help and aid and support that I establish and work towards husni ibadatik, perfecting your worship. 
Not just ibadatik, your worship. Husni ibadatik. That I perfect your worship the way you deserve it and the way you require it from us. He said to him, do not forget that after every salat you say it. Depende if you are serious. You will not move from your position until you have said this dhikr. This is why the ulama, they differed as to when is this dhikr supposed to be said? At the end of the salat or after the salat? There are two opinions. One opinion says that as you finish your tahiyat, just before you make a salam, you say, Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. And then you conclude your salat. And then you can say it after that as a, as a part of adhkaru salat, no problems. But in a salat, it's much better because you're in a salat and this is a position in where dua is much more accepted. For you say it in that time. 